Hello, my name is Lila Anderson. I'm an educator of visual literacy and learning for University Museums. I'm also the coordinator of the React Exhibition Series. Uh, the React Exhibition Series is a program that we have at University Museums uh, where any faculty or PNS staff can submit a proposal for a topic that they'd like to explore using visual material uh, in the University Museum Permanent Collection. So each year, uh, about this time, uh, we collect applications for uh, faculty that want to explore a subject matter that they feel like uh, can create important uh, discussion, a discourse, maybe it's something that is difficult to talk about, and presenting a collection of works of art can be a way to facilitate discussion. So React Exhibition Series really uh, looks to create a space for discussion, to present multiple perspectives on an idea, and to highlight the objects of the permanent collection of university museums, and really um, emphasize that idea that this is the university, uh, this is the university's collection. Uh, for students, for that community, this is your collection, this is your museum. And by allowing uh, guest curators to come in and work, in, work with our collection and explore those ideas, we can create um, a lot of really exciting exhibitions here. So the exhibition that we're in right now, uh, hashtag women know stuff too, uh, celebration of women's expertise in the arts is one of our is our current uh, React exhibition. It was co-curated by Dr. Emily Morgan and Dr. Roxanne Galuft. Uh, so they uh, proposed this idea to talk about uh, women's expertise in the arts and what does that mean, uh, not only um, from the perspective of what artwork they're making, but what materials they're using and the idea of expertise, technical expertise in a field, and how women are really innovators in that space, um, and giving examples from our collection uh, where we see that, and being able to delve into these different uh, works of art and different aspects of creating, making, um, and exploring process. What I want to do for our virtual tour is take you through and um, I'm not going to talk about every work of art, but just highlight a few uh, to give you some more details about. So the one I want to start with is Linda Emerson's Paper Cutting. Linda Emerson is an artist who lives part of the year in Ames and then part of the year in the UK. Um, and she's been working with this technique of paper cutting uh, for uh, quite, a, quite a few years. She was first introduced to uh, this technique uh, on a visit to Switzerland and became really enamored with this traditional technique that you often see um, in that part of the world. Um, although there are traditions of paper cutting that we see um, in a lot of different countries, it really, um, in a lot of ways, it originates in China. You see traditions um, in Mexico, um, in, in Switzerland. So this is a, a traditional way of making images um, in a lot of different places, and one that Linda was really drawn to in order to create uh, works of art. So in traditional um, paper cutting, uh, you would use small pairs of scissors and this would not be drawn out ahead of time. And Linda actually came and gave a gallery chat here and, and talked about this and she said that she actually does draw out the patterns um, and she uses a scalpel to cut these, um, which is kind of an interesting technique uh, and one that she didn't originally start with the scalpel, started with X-Acto blades and then a uh, doctor relative gave her a scalpel and suggested she try it and found that it had uh, a lot of precision in the technique. Uh, but I want to look uh, closely at this because there's such incredible details. Um, she does follow the fairly traditional pattern of having a, a central image in the center surrounded by patterns and different images. This is a paper cutting that was um, commissioned by University Museums for the reopening of the Christian Peterson Art Museum. So you can see uh, this is Morrow Hall in the center of the paper cutting and then surrounding it there's images from the Art on Campus collection. So there's uh, different sculptures, uh, border crossings, you can see uh, Forward by William King, Carum, The Left-Sided Angel, so uh, there's here's Beverly Pepper, so you have these works of the Art on Campus collection and 
in so many ways this celebrates and um, shares parts of our Art on Campus collection. Um, Emerson was actually an alumna of Iowa State, and during her time here, she met uh, Christian Peterson, and she was actually selected at an event to be a model for him. So he brought her up on the stage, and he, he started to draw her and create a, a bust of, of her face. And then later, um, she finished posing for that bust, and he created that. So um, she was, again, a fitting choice to celebrate the reopening of the Christian Peterson Art Museum. And here at the top, you can see uh, Christian Peterson te teaching a sculpture class and creating a bust um, and teaching students how to do the same at the top. Um, and then, of course, the iconic uh, Fountain of the Four Seasons uh, is down below. I'm going to see from the history of Daring some of Christian Peterson's artworks on our campus. Um, she also has the Moral Act here, um, commemorating the land grant university. Uh, so there's a lot of really beautiful, subtle details here, and the fact that this is just a piece of paper that's been cut is really remarkable. And I think Emerson is a great example of a woman artist who uses um, just really exhibits amazing technical prowess in order to create really impactful works of art. So, um, yeah, it's, I think, a one that, to me, makes a lot of sense to, to celebrate and to highlight in this uh, exhibition that talks about the things that women uh, artists can innovate in and the techniques that they use. Another woman artist that is highlighted in this exhibition is Nori Sato. Um, she is an artist that we have in our public art collection, uh, the Art on Campus collection, but here on display we have actually a printing plate. Um, so this is the actual metal plate that was used to create prints um, that are now hanging in Hawk Hall. Uh, printing plates are not something you usually see on display um, in museums, uh, rather the prints themselves. Um, so it's something that I think is a really exciting opportunity to be able to look at this uh, part of the process and a really in a lot of ways a material that the artist is spending so much time with um, creating almost more so than the print itself is, is, the, is the plate. Um, Marie Sato is, was trained as a printmaker, but she also makes, as I said, public artworks. And the installation in Hawk Hall includes uh, these images, which is actually uh, a form of a periodic table. Um, and along with that installation, she has a, 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 a uh, whole selection of glassware that she worked with a glassware to use scientific glassware to create these forms and playful artistic images, um, as well as a whole installation around the front of the building. So definitely encourage you to look at that installation in Hawk Hall. Uh, but again, going back to the idea of women's technical skill, um, she, by showing the plate, we can look at the very technical part of the process that Nora uses to create images. Uh, because from this plate, you can draw and pull all different kinds of prints. You can apply different colors, we can print this on different paper. Um, but it's, I think, to me, very interesting to look at the, the base layer that this is coming from. Here we're looking at a basket that was created by artist Ruth Castle. Um, basket weaving is a really ancient uh, practice and craft uh, form. Um, and I think one of the exciting things that this exhibition does is looks at that idea of craft and versus fine art and what medias are often associated with forms of craft or maybe women's work um, that are really, in this case, elevated and changed into real works of fine art. And to me, this is so much more sculptural um, than it is is a basket. Um, I think Castle is playing with the functionality of the basket by creating these spaces that are so wide, and yet um, it creates such an amazing um, kind of texture and image, um, and the material itself takes on a different quality beyond its functionality. Uh, so this is one that uh, the curators chose to highlight uh, just because it, I think we want to bring up that conversation of, of 
what, why do we make certain distinctions uh, between uh, decorative arts, craft, and, and fine art. And I think it's something that in the University Museum collection that we really uh, try not to do, that we think about whether you're talking about a ceramic vessel, a basket, a painting, or a sculpture, that those all have the same merit as a work of art. So here we're looking at a selection of three rings uh, by artist Anne Al. Uh, she is a local artist that has a uh, studio and, and store in Valley Junction. Um, and she does a lot of really uh, beautiful metal smithing. Uh, these rings, uh, to me, what's so compelling about them is that they take on almost an architectural quality and transcend uh, in a lot of ways what we traditionally think about um, as, as jewelry, and yet at the same time, it's so hard not to just want to reach in there and put these on and wear them and, and try them. Uh, so there's this wonderful, um, I think, balance that she's able to achieve in creating a, a truly um, exceptional object uh, that also has uh, a very wearable quality. And again, metalsmithing is a practice that um, we see it developing over a long period of time and is, has been associated as a male-dominated uh, field. Um, and so here we highlight um, a woman artist who's really an innovator uh, in this area of metalsmithing and jewelry making. The last uh, work of art that I want to highlight and talk about in this exhibition is uh, this glass pair. Uh, or called the Zamphirical Pair. Uh, it was made by an artist team of two women artists, Joey Kirkpatrick and Flora Mace. Um, they were artists who met at Pilchuck School of Glass. Uh, they were actually the first female instructors at Pilchuck School of Glass. Uh, they were introduced uh, by glass artist Dale Chihuly, um, and they have been working together. They still produce artwork um, for so they produce artwork for over 40 years together. Um, and some of the artwork that they're uh, most known for is these uh, fruits or life objects. Some of them are flowers uh, that are done with these really amazingly intricate glass techniques. So Zamfirico is actually a Venetian glass blowing technique. That's a fairly old uh, technique of glass where uh, canes of glass are twisted into different patterns and then um, basically warmed up so they can be pulled and stretched and then clear glass is grown, blown uh, through them. So it's a, it's a difficult process, it's a highly technical process. Um, and here we see uh, Mason Kirkpatrick using that to create um, these sculptural objects of very everyday things, of mundane things. So taking something um, that maybe in, a, that in some ways has been reserved for very um, highly kind of decorative highly sought after objects and using it to create something that is somewhat mundane and everyday. So celebrating um, these everyday objects by making them into these beautiful um, sculptural, um, highly kind of elaborate uh, items, I think it's really very special. I also think there's something very whimsical and fun about this. You know, it's a huge glass pear um, that uh, so, so they definitely have a very playful uh, approach, but I think there's something very, um, very compelling in the way that they are able to kind of invert some of those traditional techniques and practices in a very male-dominated field and make it something that is really innovative and original and has a very new um, feeling.